Armed with the knowledge of the past, we move forward to create a better future for our children. As we look toward tomorrow, all eyes must focus on two key goals. The first is increasing the budget for education. And the second is What is the second goal? Wrapping up a second consecutive All-American season, trying to wrap up the home career at Kansas at 58-0 against Eduardo Nahara and the Sooners, as soon as we're done in Providence. Chris, we'll see you and Digger in the studio at halftime of that game as well. Check it out into Providence, number 12. Farley with the quick foul as El Amin and the Huskies broke the pressure. Here, Connecticut leads by seven with 35 seconds left. I don't know what Jimmy's upset at. I guess the clock didn't start. He's mad at his own timer. I wonder if he hollers at his wife when he's a little late in the morning, huh? He wanted a few seconds off. He wouldn't want to wait on him in the morning. That is five on Farley. He's going to leave with a very good night. 19 points did his damage in the first half against Connecticut. As Justin Farley had 15 in the first 20 minutes. I liked his moxie, too. I mean, big shots, big handle, big plays. How about the behind-the-back pass? Very confident performer. Got himself out of some trouble early. El Amin can add to his point total. Now 21 of the last 29 games. It's all 29 games he's played in Connecticut in double figures. And Jimmy's got some options, too. I mean, they had a lot of people that can help you at critical junctures. Very competitive as well. Most think the Huskies will be a two seed. The question is, where will they be a two seed? Remember, this building will host a first round and second round games in the Eastern region. So Connecticut can't play here. It would be nice for the committee not to put Connecticut in a site where the games are played the same day as the games here in Hartford. I, I think that it doesn't matter now, right? It they changed change that role, yeah. But the fans have sold this building out for the NCAAs. It would be very nice. The committee should do that favor to these loyal Connecticut fans. They have not seen their Huskies lose in Hartford this year. A perfect season in the Civic Center. They clinch a share of the Big East title. They clinch a bye for the first round of the Big East tournament. Win 25 for UConn over Providence, 77 to 68. With Bill Raftery and our entire Big East Big Monday crew, Mike Tarico. Hope you've enjoyed Big Monday all year from the Big East. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now back to the studio. Here's Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps. Mike, thank you. We'll take you to the Emotion Senior Day at Fog Allen Fieldhouse, including junior Paul Pierce, Sooners against the Jayhawks coming up. If you've always dreamed about owning handcrafted, elegant oak furniture, Oak Warehouse in Perry can make those dreams come true. Oak Warehouse has beautiful solid oak curios, entertainment centers, and hutches. And if you've dreamed about that gorgeous oak panel or sleigh bed, Oak Warehouse has the styles for you. So avoid those outrageous big city prices and enjoy the savings at Oak Warehouse by the railroad tracks in downtown Perry. Oak Warehouse here in Perry, down by the railroad track. Senior night at Allen Fieldhouse. B.B. McGrath, joined by your parents, Tom and Madeline Moore. Bud Light 
brings you Big Monday, game number two for the Big 12 Conference as the Kansas Jayhawks play host to the Oklahoma Sooners. And for Rafe LaFrance, Billy Thomas, and C.B. McGrath, a very, very special evening because it is senior night. And with all the fame and tradition that this building houses, Larry, uh, plus the fact the tradition of this school, senior night is something that is really, really special. These guys can go 58 and 0, the best record that a KU team has ever had. And a very special player in Rafe LaFrance, who has a possibility of also being a player of the year. Yeah, Ron, you know, you talk about emotion in a game like this, and it's very, very important in college basketball. But let's talk about the practical part of it. And that's the skill of this great player in Rafe LaFrance. He is truly one of America's great players. The great turnaround jump shot, the inside play, the face up, any way you want to do it, Rafe LaFrance can do it. This guy has carried this club all year long, and they really missed him during that nine game absence when he had his hand injury. There's nothing that Oklahoma would rather do, and that is to rain on KU's parade tonight. Now, two years ago at Iowa State, they did just that on senior night, and they got a guy in Corey Brewer, who was this week's Big 12 Player of the Week, Larry, that is capable of leading that kind of charge. Well, he'll have to step up very big tonight. This is a very depleted Oklahoma Sooner group. He's the guy that has been scoring for them all year long. He gets most of it done on the outside. He's got to have a gigantic game tonight is what is truly one of the great nights in college basketball, senior night. So, for KU, they want to keep this win streak alive. They'd like for it to be perfect for the outgoing seniors. OU would love to rain on that parade. This morning, strange things are happening all over the world. Shops are about them empty. Parts suppliers are partless. And assembly workers have nothing to assemble. Is this any way to run a business? With FedEx it is. Every morning, the world gets just what it wants, just when it needs it, without expensive warehousing. Gone today, here again tomorrow. Now that's the way the world works. Bet you Bud Light, my friend here can beat you. Yeah, right. Okay, pal, you're on. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. This would be mine. Make it a Bud Light. Bud Light says my friend here can beat you. The only thing more unpredictable in nature is people. And I deal with both. You never know. Someone could be calling for a $25 titanium ice screw or a $25,000 expedition to Mount Everest. So I can't afford to miss a call. If I do, well, that means money. That's why I value GTE. Even out here, I know my calls aren't being dropped. Oops! Dropped. That's a bad word. and tears of joy around this uh, famed old field house tonight. Yesterday, we had an opportunity to sit down to visit with Rafe LaFrance. How important is this win streak and going out 58-0? and 0? It's something that uh, um, about midway through my sophomore season, uh, I realized, and uh, Billy and CB, we, 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 all, we all realized that uh, this is something that could be achieved. We hadn't lo lost thus far, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll win tonight and... Uh, Make it four years straight. Well, there's a, a good look at the senior out of Monona, Iowa, averaging almost 21 points a game, missed nine games this year because of the broken finger. Larry, go back to your senior night in Lexington, Kentucky, and I'm sure it's something that is as present to you as it is right now to Ray for friends. It will be, you know, for always to him. You know what it is, Ron? It's, it's a new stage in life. I mean, for a lot of guys, they're going to give up something they've been doing competitively for over a decade. For some of them, it's going to be a chance to really get in and make a lot of money, like Ray for friends will be. But most of these guys are now going to play basketball for fun. But what they will remember the most, as a lot of college seniors will around this country, is this night, because it's a special night. I'll tell you that I had a great night. It was a few years ago, really too many that I want to talk about. But I did have one, and I still remember it. 
Well, now let's take a look at the GTE starting lineups. And first of all, for head coach Kelvin Sampson and his Oklahoma Sooners, Johnson, Brewer, Allison, Humphrey, and Wiley. And for Brewer, well, last this week, actually, named the Big 12 Player of the Week. He averages over 21 points a ball game. And the starters tonight, the Roy Williams of the Jayhawks, Thomas McGrath, Pugh, Paul Pierce, and Rafe LaFrance. And, of course, the ones that are highlighted are the gentlemen who are starting and playing their final game here at Allen Fieldhouse. Here's Billy. From Manoa, Iowa, number 45, There's his proud dad and a man who has been his mentor and head coach for the last four years. And Larry, you, we both were standing out on the floor as they came out and brought their parents flowers and the ovations went up before these announcements right here of the starting lineups. And I mean, it was hard to keep the hair on the back of your neck or it just, I mean, it really was a touching moment. Well, it is. You know, this is the second or third time I've been out here for senior night. And no matter where I stop, I've made a couple of stops last week of senior night. And no matter where you go, you get that feeling, that that, that feeling that something is about to end, that something is about to begin. I mean, tonight, they've got three great players getting ready to move on in their life. And Rafe LaFrance is going to be a terrific NBA player, but what a career he has had in Kansas. Well, the school record, 59 straight, is overall the longest current streak, you can see. But they are 57-0 at home, this group of seniors. And in fact, the only week, their first week as freshmen was the only time that they were not ranked but in the top 20 in the nation. Take a look at those numbers right there for Ray, Ray LaFrance. you got to remember now, he's only played in, what, 23 games, and he's got that almost 21-point-per-game average. In fact, he would rank very high in the Big 12 standings if he had played the minimum amount of games, which is 75% of the games. He jumps it up against Wiley. It'll be KU basketball. Oklahoma's going to open up in a straight man-to-man -man defense. See if Kansas goes inside immediately. They do. Pierce turned it over. Allison comes away with it. And Allison, by the way, surprised to see him in the starting lineup. He has a bad case of the flu. He sat and watched today's shoot around. Look at that pressure by Jayhawks. Good tough man-to-man. -to -man, good help. Kicks it back outside. Three on the way. Won't go. Wiley with the follow. Evan Wiley is one of those guys. I think he may be the forgotten man on this team. I mean, a lot of people talk about Corey Burr, and justifiably so, but Wiley does a nice job. Billy Thomas for three. Off the mark. Humphrey will come away with a rebound. Thomas's mom, of course, is here tonight because of senior night. And every time I've ever done a game at KU and his mom was here, he just lights it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good motivation to have yeah. mom sitting there yeah, watching. Allison tries to reset as Pierce works against him. Two to nothing Sooners. Oklahoma trying to they cut this game down. They want to use every second on that shot clock. Jumper won't go. LaFrance comes down with the rebound, and then it is thrown away. As McGrath took off up the sideline, was not there, and he tried to give it off to him. Kelvin Sampson talk about a nice coaching job. 19 and 8, 10 and 4 for the Sooners so far this year. Maybe his best coaching job, Larry. Mm -hmm. you know, this has been a banged up ball club. Probably the thing that bothered him most is Heskett. Tim Heskett was going to be the third man in a rotation at guard as we see a turnover travel by Allison. But when he went down with a bulging disc, then all of a sudden their numbers got cut in that area severely. But they have played with a lot of heart. 19 victories for the Sooners. Q inside. Yeah, one of the things that LaFrench does well, I know we talk about all of the great accomplishments he has, but I think he's one of the better passers for a big man in the country. I think you're right. The bouncer, the turnaround, Humphrey forced that one a little bit. LaFrench with his second rebound. And here comes McGrath. He'll push it up in the wing to Pierce and feeds it back. LaFrench will score. I want to tell you why LaFrance bailed Pierce out on that one because he had nowhere to go with that basketball. He was going to walk. You're right. 
That's the advantage of having a center that can run the floor as well as LaPrince does. We'll keep an eye on Allison and see how strong he is and how long he's able to go. Because numbers against KU is what always is the downside. And plus the fact, Larry, it is an inordinately warm evening in this gymnasium tonight. Jump ball, it'll stay with the centers. Watch Pierce inside here. He looks back and sees LaFrance running the floor, catching and laying it off the window. How many times has he done that in the last four years, building that lane? C.B. McGrath will go to the bench. Ryan Robertson will come into the lineup. Ryan is the usual starter. C.B. is the man who comes off the bench and spells him as Wiley scores. Wiley with a nice move right in LaFrance's face that time. Sooner still in that man-to-man -man defense. Kansas runs, loves to run this passing game. And what they wind up with, and this is going to be a little nickel dimer there, is one in and four out with the rotation. It always amazes me at fouls. You know, some of them I think are very trivial. I mean, I thought that was a trivial foul. Then you see a guy get really hammered inside, and nothing ever happens. <laughs> Four, just going under 17 minutes to play in his opening half. Took a while to get the flowers off the floor from what well, did it ever pregame festivity. Pierce little off balance and he'll knock it down. The athleticism of such a big man is a marvel to see. And here's the question: We got three seniors playing their last game. Is this the last one for Paul Pierce? Good question. Will he go out? Yeah, a lot of people think so. If he's one of the top four or five. Let's watch him finish here. Showtime. I got to believe, Ron, if he's one of the top three or four picks in the country, I don't know how he could not come out. Nice Boy, pass. Great, great dish pass. to Humphrey. Yes. Oh, was that pretty? Burr with a nice look in there. Now the trap on Robertson. Gets it away to Pew. KU okay, breaks it quickly. The lob inside. Pierce fumbled it and still scored. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, somehow he's able to have some hang time up there. He just hung around the basket until the ball got there. The minute they saw the defense, they got him free inside. Johnson, offense. Allison gasping for air. He's going to go to the bench. Nahara will come off the bench and replace him. Time out on the floor. Jayhawks by four. We'll be right back. a minute? That's cheap. <laughs> Isn't saving money fun? 1-800-COLLECTS. 10 cents a minute every evening. Golden Door, one of the world's most renowned spas. Here, rejuvenating treatments restore health to mind and body. And for hair, the salon at Golden Door chooses Pantene Pro-V, the ultimate in provitamin therapy. Only Pro-V has this patented provitamin formula that penetrates from root to tip. Even the most damaged hair seems revitalized, renewed, restored to a natural state of enhanced well-being. Pantene Pro-V, for hair so healthy it shines. The Golden Door Spa agrees. Kansas up by Ford. Larry, show us what happened on that alley-oop. Well, obviously what happened here was that Oklahoma didn't rotate quickly enough. You saw the trap out front. Watch Billy Thomas get the ball, but more importantly, watch Paul Pierce underneath. He hung around until the ball got there, and then it was an easy lay-in. Nice pass, too, by Billy Thomas. Was a good pickup. Field goals, KU 5 of 6. They've made their last five. In fact, the last three by Pierce. Oklahoma 50%, 3 of 6. 
and Pierce leading the way with a total of six points in the early going. Pierce has been a little bit of a funk, a slump. Uh, he came out of it a little bit against the in the Iowa State game on Saturday in the second half, but uh, has been in a yeah. slump. Uh, he he had they need him to turn it up. No question. He had 19 in that ball game, but last Monday night against Colorado was one of those stop, start, stop, start, more stops than starts. <laughs> Thomas on the cut. The tip by Pugh. His head coach says, I love his defense, and that's the reason he plays so much for me, but also very good fundamentally and around the hoop. I love the crowd when they go, Pew. <laughs> <laughs> with the bounce pass inside Humphrey misses and Wiley right there There's wow guy again huh <laughs> Roy Williams is up talking to the folks who are about to come in talking about blocking out inside Wiley doing a nice job getting inside that Kansas defense Robertson for three got it well right you can look around a lot of players on this Kansas club and uh, that spell success but Ryan Robertson is as big a contributor as anybody and you know he doesn't shoot that many threes he's a 44 percent three-point shooter Larry. Well, that's because they got a lot of other guys out there throwing them up like Billy Thomas yeah that's right Nahara working against Pierce Wiley with the bounce pass Humphrey way too hard off the glass that wasn't a kiss that was uh, <laughs> that was a hammer job Side here. This is a nice putback right here. You know, anytime Kansas goes after the basketball, it's going to free up that weak side on the other side of the basket. Wiley's taking full advantage of that. A couple of good baskets, good offensive rebounds. Humphrey's feeling bad about himself shooting an air ball, but since I thought it caught iron, it didn't, so he gets an assist there. 15 to 8. About to go under 14 minutes to play in his opening half. The way and main thing you want to do with KU here at home is you want to maintain contact. You don't want to see that double figure lead early. It can spell disaster. How difficult it is in here to keep your poise. Renzi Stone, nice, nice. nice give to Wiley. Well, Wiley's right around that basket, isn't he? Well, he has got eight quick ones. Renzi Stone with a nice look inside. Good pass. They're all back to Pierce. Ray LaFrench, too hard, and Renzi Stone battles for the ball against Earl. Well, so far, it's been a highlight reel for Evan Wiley. Watch this move inside. He gets LaFrench, LaFrench kind of sealed off and then gets inside of him. Hey, Wiley doing a nice job. Eight points, hadn't missed a shot yet. You know, he shoots 59% from the field, which is also what he shoots at the free throw line. And I'm kidding, they coach this. You ought to put somebody on him at the free throw line. <laughs> Don't let him shoot uncontested. No, back up. Oh, what a nice pass. Again, good movement. Michael Johnson delivering. The good look. Three point ball game. Bradford. Oh, great look. Well, French got himself open. Boy, Ryan Robertson is something, isn't he? Averages six assists a game. Renzi Stone got caught napping, and his head coach came off the bench and let him hear about it. Oklahoma continues to try to push the ball into the paint area. They've been attacking Kansas pretty effectively in there. They have inside, but stop and think about this. Zero points for Brewer so far, and we've almost played eight minutes. Maybe the, the game plan is not for him to shoot, but get the ball inside when you're having the success. Maybe right. That's a travel turnover against Nahara. Watch the senior, Rafe LaFrance here. Baseline cut, wide open. How can you forget about Rafe LaFrance? <laughs> Chenna within the lineup, number 44. And are they checking over his shoulder? Is he, uh, no, the French is okay. Well, he's rubbing it a little bit right there. May have caught an elbow. Chenoweth picks up the foul. He was battling inside with Rinzai Stone. Not a good way to start coming off the bench. You have to turn around and face Roy Williams. You play two, two seconds and you get a foul. Here's LaFrance kind of exercising, flexing that uh, shoulder a little bit. Oh, 
Josh Hit Johnson. Hit to Brewer. They get him open, and he has to rush it. Can't get it to go. Earl skies for the rebound. Bradford around Nahara and misses on the shot. Here's Stone with the outlet pass, but KU's back on defense. Brewer to Johnson. Oh, what a strong rebound that was. Kenny Gregory. Gregory got the rebound and then tripped over Nahara, who will pick up the foul. So there's a break in the action. 11.57 left until halftime. KU by five. This mountain in North America is 20,320 feet. Cool. Autobytel.com. I'm going to buy the car I want. Your car is ready, my and car, you did it car. all online, even the financing. Cool. Low cost car buying from the comfort of your own pajamas. New Line Cinema presents a startling new vision from the director of The Crow. On the edge of reality and the threshold of illusion lies a world beyond all imagination. I call them the strangers. The city, everyone in it, is their experiment. They mix and match our memories. No way out! Get your feet! Dark City. Rated R starts Friday. The Good Housekeeping Institute tested 13 competing hairsprays. Who came out on top? Pantene Pro V Flexible Hold. Number one for soft feel. Number one for bounce back hold. Pantene Pro V Flexible Hold. It aced Good Housekeeping's test. Now put it to yours. 17 to 12, Kansas. By the way, a big Monday presented by Bud Light. More college basketball on the way following Sports Center. It is UNLV at number five, Utah. That's around midnight Eastern time, and I'll show you the standings. Larry, here's the strange thing. Utah is the number five team in the country, and uh, look at how the numbers shape up. New Mexico leads them in the conference race in that mountain division. Yeah, in that mountain division. That Pacific division is owned by TCU. Billy Tubbs' club really hot right now. Ray LaFrance still uh, taking a little pine time. He's still massaging that shoulder from time to time. One of the collisions with Wiley is when it happened just a moment ago. Bradford back over to Gregory. Pretty good position defense by Oklahoma. Good on the ball defense. Brewer doing a nice job outside. Looking for Chenna with inside. Renzi Stone doing a nice job on him. Gregory falling away. Barely gets iron on that. And the ball, did it hit Stone last? Yes. It'll stay with the Jayhawks. Well, now take a look at what happens here. See that bump right there? I think that's what caused the injury to Rafe LaFrance's left shoulder. See, he grabs it right there. After he turned and went to the inside, he actually hit Wiley right in the chest. Unless Wiley's wearing a breastplate or something there like a bulletproof vest. I don't know how that can hurt you, but he got him. <laughs> Seven seconds on the shot clock. Robertson for three. Not there. LaFrance on the foul. And he was fouled. Take a look again on the miss by Ryan Robertson. Watch Rafe LaFrance on the other side follow this up. He does such a great job with his offensive rebounding. And you saw that, saw that shot of his dad up there. Ask him about that. He says, yeah, I look up there once in a while, and I can always tell when dad is pleased or he's upset. And why not? I mean, you have to, it's a tendency to have to look at your parents up there when you're playing a game. Stone picks up the foul. He goes to the bench as LaFrance completes the three-point play. There they are. You know what he said? He says it's body language. He says, I can always tell. I look at Dad, I can tell by his body language whether he likes what I'm doing. Well, they moved down here from Iowa so that they could watch him play his college basketball career. <laughs> Largest lead of the night. It's 8, well, 20 they, to 12. They may want to be checking the real estate for whoever's got the number one pick. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever city. Back to Johnson. Shot clock is at 9. Nahara. 
And a foul away from the ball. Looks like Wiley. No. Beg your pardon. Ray LaFrance picks up the foul. Hey, he and Wiley were battling each other down in the paint. I'm not sure who got who first, but uh, they caught LaFrance. First foul on him and the third team foul on the Jayhawks. Four team fouls against Oklahoma and a travel against the Sooners. We are about to hit the 10 minute mark in the first half and Corey Brewer has not tallied one point yet. This guy is the number two scorer in the Big 12. Six of 12 and nine of 15 to shoot him. Pierce can't get it. Lester Earl follows. Misses on the follow, but he'll go to the line for a couple. Well, one of the strengths that I think this Kansas club has, and they've got a lot of them, but one of the biggest ones is their ability to rebound offensively. They've got about four or five guys that really pound the glass. Now, you're watching two teams tonight that rank one and two in rebounding in this league. You can see right there. I mean, you saw Pierce and Earl battling each other up there on the glass. That foul, by the way, was on Ryan Humphrey. It's Ryan's first. Lester Earl Larry about a month ago did one of the funniest things I've ever seen at a basketball game. It was like he was counting rhythm. One, two, three. Uh, shooting his free throw. It got to two and never got to three. It just held the ball and everybody jumped in the lane and were beating each other up. And Roy said over there going, shoot the ball. And he never shot. Just turned around, looked at the bench and broke out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Got to have a little levity once in a while. Blocked oh. by Earl. Good heavens, what a block. He didn't count the three on that jump. The feed to LaFrance. And the foul on Nahara. And he gets some hops. Even Rafe LaFrance came over and says, that's big. Look at this. Oh, pinned it. Pinned it. Pierce was right there with him. Oh, that's big. I was talking about rebounding. How about shot blocks? Well, Lester has 21 blocks on the season, but not any bigger than that one right there. That's a walk. I'll tell you what happened there. That is a spot position. You That's have right. to stand in there. If you pick that foot up, you cannot do that. It is a walking. That's what Paul Pierce did. He lifted his foot up. And he smiled anew because the official, when he hands you the ball, says to you, can't move, or if you have scored a hoop, then you can move. Made free throw or made field goal, you can run that baseline. Yeah. 22 to 12, 10 point margin. Brewer well short, and now he's beginning to force it. KU with numbers. Thomas back to Robertson. They'll reset it. Oklahoma good defense. Nahara gets the turnover. And he will take it the distance, and he'll go to the line for a couple. And it's one thing, you have to really give a huge E for effort because Nahara has had a stress fracture in that left foot. And Larry, he limps very, very badly. He's probably 70%, and that's it. Well, I'll tell you what, if he's 100%, he outruns Lester Earl for this basket, but he couldn't. Watch him use his body, though, to protect his ball. See him kind of nudge Earl out of the way? Good, good move with the ball. That's the second foul on Lester Earl. It is the fourth team foul on the Jayhawks. Ron Nahara was really playing well, too, before he hurt that foot. Just hasn't been the same player since he's been back. Well, he went to the hospital just before the Oklahoma State game and got an MRI. It didn't work out the next day, but did play in the basketball game. But he had the same problem last year, and you have to wonder if it is a habitual thing. Great move by Thomas on the baseline. How about the feed by LaFrance? You invert, Back to your point. Yeah, you invert that offense, and when you've got a guy that big that can pass that well, he looks over the defense, kind of like a quarterback looking over a line. You see where you're going to throw the ball. It's a big QB, too. <laughs> Nahara runs into Pew. Rebounded by Oklahoma, and they travel. Humphrey. Anytime you get pressure on the wing, you automatically go back door. Look at Rafe LaFrance. That's just a timing play. Good look, good pass. Well, I love the way LaFrance passes the basketball. 
Nice move against Wiley. Well, crowd doesn't agree, but that's not going to change anything. It is Oklahoma basketball. Well, Allison's got to go back to that bench again. Michael Johnson back in to replace him. Looks like Allison's going to be spelled a couple of times tonight. He's going to play just a couple of minutes and have to go over there and get his breath. So suffering from a little bout with the flu. Five second count. CB McGrath and the kids come off the bench and pat him saying way to go. So far Oklahoma doing a number on Brewer aren't they? They really are. Billy Thomas. Yeah. Little body angles. You saw his mom up and cheering. Kevin Sampson has seen enough. He wants a timeout. 27 to 14. The Jayhawks forge on top. There's his mom. <laughs> She's having a good time. Watch Billy Thomas launching his 234 three point shot. You know, he's made more three-point shots than everybody else on the team. He had 96 coming in. That's his 97th. The whole team's got 95. He, uh, Billy had much more of a reputation of being a streaky shooter when he came here. But it has become more and more on a regular basis that he hits those long threes. Billy T for three. These kids got a sign for everything tonight. They not only have, they not only have Sports Center, which we'll show you in a second hand. They've even got the pictures of the people who are doing it tonight. We're talking about a very basketball savvy crowd here. Illegal screen down inside. Rimsai Stone quickly comes off the bench. And that's two fouls on Humphrey. So 17 fouls against the Sooners. There's a young man right there, C.B. McGrath, one of the seniors that uh, received all the flowers and the awards tonight and the accolades of this crowd. Now, Roy, Wait, yeah, Roy Williams talked a lot about the recruiting of these three seniors, and uh, he's a walk-on. In fact, when he was talking about uh, Billy Thomas, he says, I was actually watching tape of another player, and he caught my eye. And then, of course, obviously, with LaFrance, he probably spent more time recruiting him than anybody in the history, in this history of coaching. Paul Pierce picks up the foul, so it gives us an opportunity, a couple more stories on C.B. McGrath. He's an academic All-American, and he's just a really popular player with the fans here. He's one of those Johnny Hustle guys. They know he's a walk-on, earned a scholarship, and he's had like, he's a legacy like 20 times over of people, relatives who have come to KU, and he followed him here. I kind of like tradition. I know you do. Yep. Nahara back to Stone and the left hander too hard won't go and TJ Pugh will come down with the rebound. TJ had his battles and trials and tribulations this year. He had a stretch fracture with a foot. Pierce with the jumper rattles it home. Well that one saw a lot of iron but it got down. He's got eight. Largest lead of the night at 16 as Chenoweth prepares to check in. Corey Brewer trying to get his first points. Wild off the mark. Stone with the follow. Can't get it. And Brewer battling inside. Goes to the floor. And here comes KU. It's a three on two break. Good handle. Full timeout, Oklahoma.
After years in the carpet business, we decided the only way to get carpet cleaned right was to do it ourselves. That's why Bud Jennings Carpet One is introducing Carpet One Cleaning, the most advanced system ever developed. We know that proper care is critical to keeping your carpet looking good. From the time we arrive at your door, we pledge to be thorough and professional every step of the way, leaving your home as good as new. We're simply the best in the business. We guarantee it. For a no-cost consultation, call Carpet One Cleaning today at 843-1515. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're about to spend money on your present car, money that's not going to make it worth any more, we have an idea. Why not come to Jack Elena, buy a new Honda at zero down, and spend no more on your present car? February is just not a good month to spend money on your car, but it's a great month to buy a new car at a great price. So our idea is stop spending on your car and start driving our car. See you tomorrow at Jack Elena Honda. Really, check this one out and see why it's a great idea for a month like February. Why ESPN News? Why ESPN News? Why do I have the screw from Dan Marino's knee brace? I mean, why do I have uh, the cigar stub from Red Auerbach's victory celebration in 1981? I mean, why is your guy, your cameraman, wearing Niners colors when I made it abundantly clear before we started that this side of the room is NFC, that side is AFC? Yeah, Ted, just, just do what he says. Come on, guys, use your heads. Think. 18-point lead for the Jayhawks on senior night. Watch the movement on the inside. You talk about some banging. I told you about these two clubs being the two best rebounding teams. Look how they battle. Burr goes down. Pew goes on top of him. More importantly, watch the finish on the break. McGrath runs it right to the middle, drops it off to Pierce, and he drains it in the bottom of the net. Let's go back and listen to the, what happened down in the net. So Corey Brewer taking his lumps tonight. The gentleman who is the second leading scorer in the league still has not tallied. By the way, this is 17 to 2 run, Larry. Oklahoma's missed their last eight field goal attempts. Well, that's what Kansas does to you. They'll, they'll get you up and they'll hit you with two or three runs, and all of a sudden you look up and you're 25 or 30 down. CB McGrath going to be called for a hand check. got such a luxury to be able to reach down on that bench. He can go down 10, 11 guys, and it really doesn't drop off that drastically. Number 20, Kenny Gregory, the outstanding freshman from Columbus, Ohio, checks into the lineup. And here's a youngster that they are expecting huge things from, but he's still kind of searching. He's still trying to find his way. And sometimes it takes a little while, you know? How about uh, Paul Pierce being third-team All-Big 12 last year? I think he found his year this year, didn't he? No question. Nice move by Humphrey and scored. The ball got kicked back outside, so that's a reason for the whistle. Six minutes, 35 seconds left to play in this opening half. 32 to 16. Kansas on top. TJ Pugh not there. Gets his own follow and scores. Kelvin Sampson can't believe it. He just looks at the floor and shakes his head. You know, Ron, as much as we've talked about the Kansas bench, the Oklahoma bench is just the opposite. They have been depleted with injury, sickness, illness. In fact, you can look over there, you only see four guys in uniform over there. There are more ties than uniforms. That's a travel. Turnover number eight. Watch Pew down inside. Turn, keep those elbows high, and the little jump hook and the follow. Humphrey lost him in traffic there. Go get your own shot. He's trying to get away from Humphrey. By the way, it's nine turnovers against the Sooners. And speaking of that, a turnover and a foul against Pierce. It's his second. You know what? That's the third time Nahara's done that over there, and every time it's been on that side of the floor. He uh, is one of those bothersome kind of players that just constantly has his hands working. Look at that. See, Pierce really a little inattention to taking care of the basketball. Nahara, very aware, very quick. Nahara doesn't look like, uh, at least tonight, he is too hampered by that foot. Obviously, he has been all year long. That is, that is their third free throw. I'll tell you what happened at shoot-around today. 
was standing over visiting with uh, Coach Sampson, and his kids came out, and they shot free throws and free throws and free throws. And all of a sudden, he turned around and looked at it and said, you know, this could be rather presumptuous because since it's senior night, I understand the opposing team doesn't get to shoot many of these. <laughs> they have shot four in this first half. Gregory against Allison. Pierce for three. Nice shot. I was going to say it's a two now. Jimmy Burr, one of the officials watching, and very astutely caught that right foot on the line. And they have the official score changing. Hey, one thing, Pierce doesn't have a lot of backspin on that ball, does it? It almost goes up there like a knuckleball. The friends and Earl prepare to check back into the lineup. Nahara muscles his way up. Humphrey skies for the rebound and scores, and fouled by Chenoweth. Nice play by Ryan Humphrey. I was visiting with some of the Oklahoma people before the game tonight, and I was telling them I, I was most impressed by the number of players who have five and more rebounds. Ryan Humphrey, who has six. But almost everybody on this club that plays a lot is able to rebound. I'll tell you who has been one of the MVPs for Oklahoma this year is Alex Brown, who's the basketball trainer, who's sitting down close to the end of the bench. He has had to uh, keep an eye on an awful lot of people. Almost missed on that one. LaFrance battles against Wiley, and Wiley throws the ball off of him. Nice play that time by Wiley. Couldn't quite lob the ball up over his head far enough. That's Evan Wiley again. See, now he fronts LaFrance this time, gets a little help from Johnson on the backside, then saves it and throws it off LaFrance's knee. Good heads-up play. Smart move. Under five minutes until halftime. Gregory and Allison, quite a collision. Shot clock is now at 10. Allison for three. And this young man can light it up from out there, Larry. Pretty good maneuver right there by Oklahoma. They move the ball well, a couple of crisp passes right to the corner. You're going to give him two rather than three. Pierce with the finger roll, can't get it. Michael Johnson comes away with it. And almost an air ball. Humphrey follows. And offensive rebounding again by Oklahoma. Double team on Gregory. Well, Humphrey comes down with the rebound, and uh, KU had plenty of chances as Gregory and LaFrance almost played volleyball with it back and forth. Oklahoma Shore has a pretty good quickness with her hands, slapping the ball, getting a few touches on, on the defensive end. You see Nahara grab his shorts. You see Wiley doing the same thing, a Humphrey, rather. This is a tired Oklahoma basketball team because of the lack of depth. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Renting a car is part of your vacation, right? Don't worry. So Alamo thinks it should be part of your fun. Drive happy. That's why every time you rent from Alamo, you get our guarantee of unlimited smileage. And with Alamo's great drive happy deals, you've got lots of money left for the fun stuff. Don't worry. Drive happy. Drive happy now. Whoa. happen and no matter where or when they do the world's largest claim service network gets on the case immediately prompt personal claim service is no accident so we can get you back on the road faster than you can say like a good neighbor state farm is there you got him Jeff, i can only see i've got the perfect thing 
the Bosch MicroEdge Excel has a revolutionary dual rubber wiping element. Move to the left a little. It's the best cleaning, longest lasting blade we've ever made. Bosch MicroEdge Excel, the most advanced wiper system ever. Beautiful! But I think we lost the headlight. Brian Humphrey on the bench, and Larry, we've documented this year, he's anemic, and he has not been able to get in shape. Yeah, you can see right here. right There he is right there. Now, you'll see him trying to work his way down the floor, but he is really trailing this play. You can see, see he starts to point immediately over to the bench and say, I need some help. Having difficulty breathing. That iron deficiency has really caused him a problem. He immediately went to that bench. 58% for Kansas. Three-point field goals, two of four, and Oklahoma 0 for four. Brewer, no points so far for the night. He's 0 of five. Well, we said Brewer had to have a big game tonight. He's not, and that's the reason Oklahoma's down as much as they are. Down by 13 as we're about to go into the three-minute mark. Kansas goes to a 2-3 zone. Roy Williams switching defenses a little bit. Maybe to give his club a little bit of a breather, too. Nahara against Earl. Brewer for three, got it. So That's he big. scores at the 302 mark. Well, that was a rainbow, wasn't it? Thomas unlucky on that one. Rattled in and out. Kevin Sampson said, slow down now, guys. We don't want to get into a track meet with these fellas. Hey, they got this game back to 10. We're looking over that Kansas defense. Wiley, and of course, they just leave him alone out there. And he steps up, misses the 16-footer. And that's the reason. Yep. They will entice that to happen many times. Even though he shoots 59%, most of those really in the paint. Yeah. Nick Bradford. Well, two super games make for a super Tuesday. First of all, in the Big Ten, number 23, Illinois at Indiana as the Hoosiers try to rebound from that trouncing by Michigan yesterday. And then to the Southeastern Conference, it's Georgia at South Carolina, 9.30 Eastern time. All on Super Tuesday. Well, what a job Lon Kruger has done with that fighting Illini up there. I think a lot of people did not expect them to finish where they are right now, battling right for the top. Great recruiting year also. Yes, sir, he did. Eddie Fulker once again got his Gamecocks back playing. His basketball team that came off a great year last year. So Humphrey got his breather. He's going to come back into the lineup with 2-12 remaining. Nahara will go to the bench. Rinzai Stone goes to the bench. Allison will be on the floor. Wiley Johnson and Brewer. That's the five for the Sooners. Bradford swishes it. Eighth player to score for KU tonight. And it's back to an 11 point margin. But as Larry said, you've got to give Oklahoma a world of credit for what they have done to get back in this one. And they don't have their ace lighting them up just yet. Brewer. Robertson defensively tipped the ball. Lester Earl. Spin move way too high off the glass though. But there again, Johnson rebounding the basketball. I was talking about their guard. Even their guards are good rebounders. He averages almost three rebounds a ball game. Yeah. Little stop and go action by Johnson there. Bradford, youngster out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Five-second count. That's twice in the first half. No, they got a 20-second timeout. A beg your pardon. The first one, McGrath paused. This one, they realize they're about to get the five-second call, so they get the 20. Coming up on the courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report, Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps are standing by. Providence of UConn highlights. Vital sixth man and buzzer beater in the Mac. Hey, let me ask you a question. You and I have seen a lot of college basketball this year, and I have made this observation the last couple of weeks, but it seems like to me, for that 20-second timeout, I have seen more teams use it to save possession of the basketball instead of using it for strategy. 
you know you're exactly right and what coaches are really beginning to complain about and it's tough on the officials is how many times have you seen it where a guy is going out of bounds does he have possession or not and he calls it he calls a timeout see he's in trouble right there now he knows he's in trouble what's he do takes a timeout take the 20. You like that? No, I wish they'd get rid of it, actually. You know, especially for the guys going out of bounds. I mean, I, I think that's a bad play. They got rid of it in the NBA this year. Nice look by Humphrey and Wiley with the jam. First time that he scored in a while. He now has 10. Got his average already here in the first half. That's going to be a push. This is an 11 to 1 run by Oklahoma in the last 3.30. I know, they, I know they do a lot of road, rodeo work down in Oklahoma, but Wiley threw a saddle that time right up on the back. Good pass inside, though, on the other end as Wiley catches and dumps. Wiley uh, just got his third, so he's going to have to go to the bench for the last 67. And be real careful in the second half. Seven to 28. 59 seconds left. Corey Brewer, three points in his first half. Allison for three. Got it. You know what? Kansas double teamed. Allison saw it, got right to the spot where he likes to shoot the three. We've got a game. All of a sudden, Oklahoma's battled back within six. Five points for Allison. <laughs> Robertson looks back over at Roy Williams. Gets the play he's looking for. There's about a second difference between shot clock and game clock. Billy Thomas. This is for two. Got it. Thomas now with seven. And it's halftime. And as they head to the locker room, it is Kansas 39 and Oklahoma 31. So let's head to the studio. Here's Chris Fowler. Chris? Ron, Larry, thank you. Well, that's a big hoop at the end of the half, but Kind of the, what do you call it, senioritis syndrome? Yeah, senior. See, I used to get a dog for a home game for senior night. <laughs> I wouldn't have one of these big games to win. I want somebody easy. Well, you had a lot of dogs on that schedule, yeah, so you let the choose so. rough. But Kansas got a battle from Kansas State last year on senior night. Sometimes the emotion doesn't translate into great basketball. Coming up on our Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report, UConn trying to close out their home season perfect. They get on Providence. Plus, Dickie V drops by to talk about the best sixth men in the country. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Advil. Advil simply lets people do what they love to do. you can't buy taste. My clients do it all the time. Like, let's say I find the most amazing English high-back armchair. Then I better get it in front of them immediately or someone else will. That's why I value GTE Internet. In seconds, I can be online in Tampa while downloading huge files from an auction in Paris. I love shopping in Paris. Especially when it's with someone else's money. Has he noticed a change? I can't stop thinking about it. What's going on? Talk to me. For James Kramer, financial news that will leave you hopelessly obsessed, hit thestreet.com. Kramer, you bad boy. Danny, come here a second. See this? This is your college fund. Now watch, watch, this is really cool. I'm gonna buy a stock that's really gonna take off. Uh-oh. Looks like the rocket just crashed and burned. There's one discount brokerage that gives you all the support. What did I do wrong? 
you'll ever need. Call 1-800-DISCOVER. Now you're not alone. I like being in control. With this Dinorex, I control the cause of my dandruff every day. Dinorex Advanced Formulas Medicine doesn't just treat the symptoms. It controls a leading cause of dandruff called Peel Valley. Now that's serious control. Dinorex Advanced Formula. And welcome back. Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. Chris Fowler along with Richard Phelps. You know, UConn and their fans, there's one game.